The real revolution in robotics isn't where you think it is. It's on the assembly line. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other videos for the engineering professional on engineering.com slash TV today. Now for years here at engineering.com, we've been arguing that the future isn't created strictly by coders, but by engineers. We feel the most interesting thing about that cool new iPhone, for example, is how engineers manage to pack more transistors into an integrated circuit than how fast it can download a movie from Netflix. What those clean room nanoscale engineers can do is amazing, but you know, in the sort of down and dirty world of mass production where I live, there's a lot going on that's important. Now here's an example. This image from Fanuc shows six robots working together to hold in position a large assembly for simultaneous forehead MIG welding. Why not just drop the assembly into a welding position or a fixture? Well, that's the point. The dirty secret of mass production for many assemblies is that a significant part of the development costs are jigs and fixtures, and they're also a major source of production delays. Now that's just to get the line running. Revise a part, an assembly or a process, and revisions to line tooling require their own set of revisions, approvals, and documentation. It's very common in industries like automotive to defer the revision or improvements in a part or a system until mid-cycle refresh or an entirely new platform rather than as a running change. Now, a major reason is the cost of fixturing. But what if that same industrial robots that do pick and place, welding, and palletizing operations could be used to hold parts and assemblies in three-dimensional space, like they're in Earth orbit, and build from there? If the fixer jig can be eliminated and replaced with software, a number of possible variations or modifications are limited only by the working envelope and the speed of the robotics. If anything short of ocean-going vessels, even size isn't much of an obstacle anymore. And the benefits of virtual fixturing, they ripple through the entire manufacturing system. Minimum lot or run sizes are constrained by the cost of tooling changeover, and it's theoretically possible to run a huge variety of product non-sequentially on the same production line. Now, welding is an obvious use case for this technology, mainly because it's a special type of assembly process. Parts aren't assembled, they're fit up for welding without appreciable forces between them. Try and do this to press a bearing into a housing, for example, and the problem gets trickier. The reaction forces supplied by a workbench or a 200-pound fixture, well, they have to be provided by the end-of-arm tooling, holding both the driving and driven parts. Well, that can work to the automation engineer's advantage if he or she can split the necessary forces between the key and the lock, so to speak. But the accuracy and repeatability of the robotics needed to pull this off makes an expensive proposition. This example, also from Fanuc, shows a backhoe frame welded simultaneously by eight robots. Now, this kind of work has actually been automated since the 1930s at Ford and General Motors with cold rivets and transfer lines, but the combination of high cost for dedicated automation in those days, combined with very high volumes for break-even, meant that only big players could even think about automation. Today it's different. Four, six, or eight robots, they're not cheap, but these are general purpose units, well understood by integrators and easy to program for any operation using G or M code with existing equipment. But is it really as expensive as it looks? If you're already using a welding robot with a hydraulic or mechanical positioner, or simply loading a hard fixture, this may not be as expensive as it seems. Some integrators tell me that compared to a high-end positioner and a welding robot integrated into a manufacturing cell with automated loading and unloading, the full tilt fixtureless cell may be price competitive. But this isn't a solution that every automation integrator will offer or even tell you about. Now with COVID, we're not going to IMTS or Fabtech anytime soon. So to see these solutions, you'll have to use the internet or better yet, use the phone and call your automation house. Social distancing, it may be a pandemic, but the infection rate of industrial robots is 0% and they don't take sick days. 